Doug Adams is a bell sculptor and he was a retired welder and he worked a, an entire uh, career welding and he always wanted to do his art. He's become uh, very important as a sculptor in the gallery. I can't believe how many bells he actually sells. And what's best with him is not only his bells, but the people fall in love with Doug Adams just meeting him. They immediately fall in love with him and they immediately want to buy one of his pieces. My name is Doug Adams and I'm a found metal object artist, and I specifically specialize in um, sculptured bells. Everything in them is recycled. I walked through the gallery doors for the first time about 10 years ago, and I was just taken back by the amazing art that's here, and I recognized a need in my work to improve. Over the next several years, I went home and I refined and perfected my work to the point where three and a half years ago, I was able to talk to Marty and Diane Herman, and uh, I was ecstatic when they accepted me into this gallery. The first day that I came here with 40 new pieces for the gallery, I walked down the back ramp of the sculpture garden, and I just started unloading my work and putting it out there, thinking that that's where they would probably want my work. And Marty says, no, no, no. My wife and I, Diane will arrange your work, and the next thing I know, they're arranging it right in the front entryway. I got out of high school in 1980, and that following Monday, I went to work in the steel mill building the plant. And the following year, they went into production, and I was there for 30 years until 2010. In 2002, I met my, my beautiful wife, Diane. She's an artist by trade and she started rubbing off on me and I started making bells out of old recycled materials. My wife teases me because I have over a hundred tons of materials on the ground at my studio. And she says, Doug, use that and then you can go and pick some more stuff. But for now, just make some more. <laughs> Cease and desist on buying more materials. <laughs> I'm guessing that I'm about 2,300 pieces that I've created over the last many years. Even, even if I try to replicate something, something is different about the new piece. Every stone is different, the glass might be different, the symbols that are on it. I was doing a show in Salt Lake City one time and an elderly Asian gentleman came through and he said, in Asian cultures we believe that stone and metals have a Zen quality to them and it's conducive to good fortune and I started at that point incorporating stones for instance this one is lichen covered and it happens to be from here in Sedona the glass itself um, my wife is the creator of that she has a kiln in our home and she we call this ice cube glass I love doing a description on each piece because most people let's face it don't know where, for instance, this piece is called a cobble. It's a mistake in the rolling mill at Newcore Steel where I worked. And this is a brake rotor off of a, a truck. And so, given them that little bit of description on it, sometimes people will go, oh yeah, that's exactly what that is. Art is meant to be enjoyed, but a lot of art is look but don't touch. My work is interactive. For instance, here at Exposures Gallery, the children that will come in and even the adults, they will interact with my art in a, in a way that they can't interact with a painting or maybe somebody's bronze sculpture, but they love ringing the bells and hearing the different tones. Exposures International Gallery has become my flagship gallery. Of all the galleries that I've ever walked through the doors of, Exposures Gallery has a special place in my heart. They make you feel like you're right at home, that it's not stuffy or highfalutin or anything. They just make you feel comfortable right off the bat. And that's what I truly love about Exposures. The, the staff here is amazing. The, the furnishings are awesome. It's just beauty. Everywhere you look is, is beautiful art. And that's what I love. <laughs>